Hello and welcome to Plant Favorites. I'm your host, Dr. Meyer. Everyone has favorites. And on this show, we talk about all kinds of our favorite things. Today on Plant Favorites, my guest is a, a very talented writer, director, producer, and one of my favorite filmmakers, Chris Miller. Hello, how's it going? Welcome to the show, Chris. Happy to be here. Chris is just a very successful filmmaker, but my favorite films he directed along with his partner, Phil Lord, are the animated pictures, Party with a Chance of Meatballs, the Lego movie, and Into the Spy Hiderverse. We'll talk about, about those movies later. But right now, let's get to who know more about you. Sounds good. What do you want to know? <laughs> I love to, to make films too. So I, I like to know what inspired you to become a filmmaker? That's a great question. Um, I was always making things uh, from when I was a kid, uh, younger than you, and I'm sure you were the same way. Um, I would, uh, at Thanksgiving, I once made a, a puppet of a, of a turkey uh, and, I, and I walked around with it, uh, uh, with the rest of my relatives. And when we sat down to have turkey dinner, I had him say, Uncle Larry, oh no. And then my grandmother said, oh, this boy, what are we gonna do with this boy? Um, and my parents uh, let me borrow, they had a VHS video camera uh, and they let me borrow it. And I started making little movies with it, with I would make like a cardboard city and have a, our pet cat knock it over and pretend it was like a Godzilla movie, uh, or I would make little claymation things, uh, or I would just do silly uh, videos with my friends. And, uh, and so that's how I started uh, getting into it. And then, then I, I never really stopped. For me, I just love drawing. I only draw multiple times a day. I love it. I draw all the time. When I'm in a meeting, I have a pen and a piece of paper and I'm always doodling. Me too. We've got so much in common. I know, it's so great. I love it. So what are the challenges of animation compared to live action? Oh, that's interesting. Well, one of the challenges is also, uh, one of the things that's really cool about animation is that you're creating every single thing that's on the screen yourself. And if you're shooting, uh, a movie and you're going into a coffee shop, you're oftentimes you'll just go to a real coffee shop where you're walking down the street. It's a real street. The trees are real. The sidewalk's real. The cracks in the sidewalk are real. But in animation, you have to draw, someone has to draw every crack in the sidewalk. Every bead of sweat on a character's temple, you'll be like, six drops of sweat or seven drops of sweat. But in a live action show or movie, the person's just sweating and that's what's really, what's really happening. So you have you have to make decisions about the smallest and weirdest things. Uh, that's what's part of why it's such a slow process, but it's also a way to be able to have different avenues of creativity because when you're shooting something where they're walking down the street, it's just, you're kind of stuck with what you got where you're shooting it. But in, uh, in animation, you can make that street look like whatever you want it to be. So that's, it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. Well, I've done a few animations myself. Oh, really? On my iPad Pro. It's oh, pretty cool. sweet. Yeah, what kind of stuff? What kind of stuff do you do? I uh, do like short little animations of, of a cat jumping on, running and jumping onto a, to a table. Amazing. Um, and I've also done on one, my, my, my personal favorite one is a boy swinging a sword. Uh -huh. And that one also has like the background moving with the character. Oh, wow. That's hard. I can't, I mean, you, so you know how slow and tedious it is and how, how it takes so much time just to do the very shortest little thing that's like two seconds long. And, and it takes so many different frames. Uh, it's a very, very slow process and very, very labor intensive, as yeah. you know. But it's pretty cool when you get it done. You're like, oh my gosh, I created life. That's animation. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, apart from that, I made a really good humorous Lego 
O stop motion film. Hey, you're um, speaking my language here. Film called Star Wars, A Christmas Tale. Oh, really? Yeah. I, you'll have to send it to me. I would love, love to see it. You're, uh, you're pushing all my buttons there. I'd love to see your stuff. So what's the difference between being a director and a producer? That's a good question. Well, a producer, there's a bunch of different types of producer. And sometimes there's a producer whose job it is to just make sure everybody stays on schedule and on budget. And there's a different type of producer who like provides the money for the project. That's not me. And neither of those are me, honestly. I'm not very good at keeping on schedule or on budget. But then there's a creative producer whose job it is is to make sure to help the filmmakers make film itself be as good as it can be. And so that's the job I do as a producer. So we just worked on a movie called The Mitchells versus the Machines that was on uh, Netflix. And we worked with this guy, Mike Rianda, who's a very talented filmmaker. And we spent a lot of time working with him on, on getting the story to be as good as it could be and getting every moment to be as good as it could be. And then we figured out who we wanted to cast as the voices and we all talked about it together. And, you know, and we would sit in the edit room with the storyboards and animatics and think about like, well, this moment could be funnier if we did this, or this would be a little bit sweeter if we did that. And we just talk about it together. And ultimately that movie uh, was being directed by Mike. And so he was, it was his decision to make, but we were sort of like there to help guide him and help him uh, give him suggestions on how to, how to make it great. And, uh, and I think the movie turned out really good. I actually, watched it and it blew, and it blew my, my mind away oh it was wow so thanks. well put together oh, i love it you. oh it was a fun one everybody was really uh filling that movie with all sorts of crazy stuff in clarity with the chance of meatballs i love the relationship between flint and his dad mm -hmm. how did you come up with the idea to make that an important part of the plot well, that's actually pretty interesting. Originally, uh, in our very first draft that we wrote of that movie, Flint didn't have a dad in the story. Um, and that character, Tim, was the tackle shop owner. And he was going into the tackle shop to buy a million feet of fishing line. And, uh, and so he designed the character to be someone who would seem really old fashioned and grumpy and be like the worst person for Flint to have to deal with when he doesn't like dealing with people. But then the head of the studio was like, this story is not uh, emotional enough yet. You need to have a, an emotional relationship. And then we thought, well, wonder if he like had a father who, who didn't understand him. And then we thought, well, what if that guy at the tackle shop was his dad? That would be crazy because they're so different and their bodies are so different and they look so different and their attitudes are so different. That would be a movie where like, oh, that's a big divide between these two characters and I hope that they can come together. And so it was really that we had already designed and built this character for a different purpose. And we we're like, let's have him be his dad. And that's how we came up with the idea. Some of the stuff was inspired by my dad, especially at the end when he's trying to teach his dad how to send an email. That was based on a real conversation I had with my dad trying to talk him through how to use the computer when he was not very good at it. He's much better now. I like the part at the end where the, the dad gets around to like expose his feelings towards Flint. And I, I just love it. I almost cried during that scene, actually. Oh. Oh, that's nice. That's a, it's a, it is a very emotional thing. It's a, it's a guy who doesn't know how to express himself, but he really loves his son. He just doesn't know how to tell him. And so it was actually pretty late in the process that we figured out that Steve the monkey had a monkey thought translator. And what if we put the thought translator on the dad and then we could hear his thoughts and then Flint would finally understand how much his dad loved him. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really sweet moment, but it's one of those things that seemed like it was intended all along, but it was actually something that we figured out along the way. So how did you, you write a story with parts from the, the, from the beginning of the movie that come back to affect the ending of the story? Yes, that's like a real key in making a satisfying screenplay, as you know, is the setups and the payoffs. And what's, uh, it's, uh, it's a slow process. I can't say I'm, I'm, 
great at it yet, but I wish that the first time I wrote something, it was perfectly, oh, all the things at the beginning were setups and all the things at the end were payoffs and it all came together and everything felt uh, necessary, but it never quite works that way. It takes a long time. And so what'll happen is uh, you'll have some stuff at the beginning of the movie that you wanna do. And then you get towards the end of the movie and you're like, well, I need something to solve this problem, but uh, but well, maybe I can find something from the beginning of the movie that we could use in, the, in a creative way. Like when we were making Mitchell's versus the machines, there was this joke about the dad being obsessed with a specific type of screwdriver. And then we were watching a, a, a cut of the movie and I was like, how is it that Rick Mitchell can get out of these pods when no one else can get out of these pods? We need to figure out a way that he can get out of them, but no one else can. And then we were like, what if we have this joke about him loving the screwdriver? What if to get out, you have to use that screwdriver? It's just an idea that you have afterwards. You have a problem and you try and solve it with something from the beginning. Or you have a really great ending idea, and then you're like, "Well, I need, uh, well, I need to set that up earlier." And then you go uh, and you go back to the beginning and you try and plant that thing in there earlier, sometimes as a joke or as something else, so it doesn't seem obvious that you're just setting it up for later. But that's part of the process, and you go through it again and again. And you try to make sure that everything, uh, that everything at the end doesn't come out of nowhere. And, it, and as many things from the beginning can come back at the end. And then that feels extra satisfying to the audience. My uh, favorite part of the, the Lego movie is where, where Badcock reports to our business about the only re re remains we found is this double-decker couch. Like, Seriously, that's the best you can come up with. I love that part. It's so funny. I just love that that one scene. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, that double-decker couch was an, uh, something that one of the editors of that movie had made. He was a young guy, and he built it in his apartment, and he thought, this will be a great idea, but it was a terrible idea because people's <laughs> legs were dangling, and nobody wanted to be on the bottom because they were afraid they were going to get collapsed under and people didn't want to be on the top because they were afraid it was going to it was going to fall and the whole thing was kind of a disaster and he was telling us the story about how he built this thing and it didn't work and we thought oh that's the perfect thing because we need Emmett to have a, a to not be a very um, creative person but to have an idea that everyone thinks is a bad idea but actually is good uh, and so we thought uh that was like the perfect type of thing and so it was just something that was from real life that uh that that's where that came from i really like the idea it's yeah. so good <laughs> you're like hey why isn't there a double decker couch yeah so what's your favorite part of making a movie um my favorite part is uh working with a bunch of creative talented funny interesting people it's a big team effort and there's hundreds of people that work work on it and and it's great if everybody is uh excited and uh, and understands what what we're trying to do and then everyone can add their own ideas to it and it makes it so much better like just like that example about the double electric couch it was this editor's story that was a thing that I never would have thought of on my own. And there's all of these things where people come in and they come and they help and add a little bit more and a little bit more. And as long as everybody knows what direction you're going and what, what type of story you're trying to tell and what they're adding is, is fitting that style and that direction, then everyone can contribute. And it feels so fun because then everybody has ownership of it. It's a big team sport. I mean, there's so much I like about making about making movies. For me, speaking from zero experience, yes. really, my favorite parts are just being around the run people. Oh, it's a great way of making friends, but most importantly, understanding your own self and and trying to who who translate your own hard feelings and a fictional character. I still love that. That is true. That's a great point, is that, you know, when you're making these things, you want to 
tap into some real emotions, right? And you have to look inside yourself and see what, what you're feeling and bring that truth into the project. And when you do, it's so much more powerful. And so it's pretty cool. So what advice do you have for young people who want to make their own films or be involved in filmmaking in other cool ways? Um, well, my number one thing is to make, do what you're already doing and make your own short films and just keep making them. Um, what's so great is that you can make a film and you can post it on YouTube. You're really lucky because people who make things that are fun, interesting, new, exciting, special, people will see them and people will, um, people get excited about them. Um, that's the best advice. And my other advice is as a part of that is to make something, don't make something because you think it's what people want to see or it's the thing that's going to get you a job. Just make the thing that you want to make, the, th the story that you want to tell, the, the thing that you are dying to work on and make, the only you would make, that has your own voice, your own tone, your own vibe, that feels like only you could have made it. Thank you for all of those very inspiring words. Oh, you're welcome. Now it's time for the speed round. All right, hold on, here we go. All right. Okay, I'm ready. Hit me on with it. these cards. All right. I have a list of different categories and Chris is going to tell us his favorite for each one. Okay. Let's start. Boom. What's your favorite Marvel char character? Well, Spider-Man. Obvious. Me I can't. too. He's got, it's got to be Spider-Man. If I said something else, people would riot. So what's your favorite fun family activity? I like to go for hikes in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's a fun thing that we can all do together. And you're feeling like you're exploring new places. And you're just out in nature. And it feels really nice. How about you? Yeah. For me, well, being home is the watching movies, playing board games, no matter what we're doing, even cool art stuff. It's just great being around family. That's true. That I e even treat my friends like family too. That's great. In, Your friends are, are like family. In, and also including the guests that come on my show. We're part of our family now, you and me. Yay! All right. So what's your favorite movie as a villain? You know, the first one that came to mind, although I don't know that this is true, is Maleficent, uh, because she wasn't invited to a party and she felt bad about it. And I feel sometimes uh, when I don't get invited to something, I feel like, hey, that's not okay. Uh, uh, but let me think about that. I, uh, this is a speed round. So I just, I can't, I can't think about it. That was the first thing that came into my head. I like Evelyn Dever from Incredibles 2. I love how she played two characters oh yeah she was pretending to be nice and then was actually one good guy yeah evil mastermind <laughs> yeah that's pretty good that's pretty good what was your favorite class in when you were in high school oh man so many classes i liked history i liked art and i liked english those are probably my three favorite history art and english how about you for me all classes but especially art and broadcasting Oh, you had broadcasting. I didn't have that as a class. I had to do that on the side on my own. If I had that as a class, that would definitely have been my favorite. Well, yeah, I love broadcasting because, well, think of all the videos you can make. Exactly. <laughs> That's what you're doing right now. So what's your favorite vacation spot? I like going to the North Shore of Kauai. Uh, and I like sitting on the beach and going in the water and not having a care in the world. That's probably my favorite. How about you? For me, Hawaii, the island of Maui, I love snorkeling. I love seeing my, my fish buddies. Oh, yeah. Snorkeling <laughs> is amazing. It's seeing like a little, when you see like a turtle or something, you're like, ah, there's a turtle. Yeah, actually, you can't, can't really see, see that out on the water or I know, water. exactly. Like... Or giant bubbles come out. Exactly. exactly. So what's your favorite karaoke song? Um, okay, so Phil and I often sing Islands in the Stream 
uh, which is a, a duet song, but I sing it like a Muppet monster where I go like, I like the industry, like that. Uh, and nobody likes it when I do it that way, but I still do it because I think it's funny. For, for karaoke, I would sing anything that's Disney related. Those, uh, like one of those like Aladdin songs, those are some great songs right there. Oh yeah, I would, I would Aladdin, Mulan, Moana. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. songs. Yeah, why not? So what's your favorite ice cream topic? Oh, uh, it's got to be crumbled Oreos all the way. Any other answer is a mistake. What's your favorite topic? What's Anything your... that's chocolate. I Well, that's sort of basically uh, Oreos chocolatey, brown. I don't really know what an Oreo flavor is, but it is delicious. So lastly, what's your favorite dance move? Oh, man. <laughs> um, well, do you, am I supposed to demonstrate? Uh, yeah, go ahead, go I'm ahead. Go. I used to do a thing called action dancing where you like do a lot of this sort of like punching type of things, but now I try to do like a little bit of like a, like more of a subtle move like that, where I do like a little, like a little, that sort of thing. And that's it. How about you? Let me see what you got. Show me what you got. All right. Mine's pretty, pretty slick and pretty All old right. fashioned. All right. Here, let's do it. I like the Michael Jackson, the moon war. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. And you had an invisible hat there too, so that was pretty great. I mean, I, I gotta create the vibe. Absolutely. A vibe created. Consider it created. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And I want to say thank you to my guest, Chris Miller. I hope you had fun. I had a blast. It was so much fun. Thank you for all your very thoughtful questions and your great conversation. This was great. Way to go. We will be, be sending you some playing favorites merch. Hot dog. A, a pen. Nice. A sticker. Yeah. A magnet. Oh, that's going to go great on the refrigerator. And a face mask. Ah, safety first. That's what I say. Before we go, do you have any projects you're working on that we should, should know about? Um, yes. We're working on a sequel to the Spider-Verse movie, which is, will come out in a little less than a year. Um, it's very exciting. Comedy murder mystery show for Apple TV Plus called The After Party. And a bunch of other crazy things. But those are the two that are, that are the closest uh, on the docket. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. I love you, work, And especially you as a person. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to check out your work, uh, but I already like you as a person. That's for sure. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Oh, well, you did a great job. I really enjoy your, your show. Thank you. All right. And for you watching... Don't forget to, to, to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I love to read your, your messages. Bye now. Bye.